Hi everyone, this is Jay with DailyTexture.com. Been a while since I've done a video. Been going through a lot of stuff. Um, I know a lot of you are aware that are on the mailing list uh, because I've shared some of that stuff there. Um, I decided today that I wanted to do a, just a simple editing video. I've been working with the the new Fragile Collection, which is a collection of 30 watercolor textures. And I wanted to show you a little bit about that. There is half the textures there and half the textures there. Lots of different colors. These are so easy to work with. And I can create artwork so fast with these. I made these because they're light and they're airy and I want to use them with some of my birds and flowers my more delicate subjects. So I am going to quickly edit this little hummingbird photo this morning and show you how easy it is to work with these. I am in working in an old version that I have a photo FX lab. You can work in Photoshop or any um, editing program you have that will allow masking. The masking is important. I put my photo on top and then the texture let me turn all these off. The texture on the bottom under the photo and then I'll mask away the background to reveal the texture beneath. The texture beneath is vertical right now so I'm going to rotate that and let's rotate it this way and make sure it is sized, resize it to be the same size as the hummingbird photo. There we go. And then I get on the photo layer and this is when I go to my masking tool and I just simply start masking away the background at full opacity. Uh, hardness I always have down to zero because I like a really soft edge look. If you put it all the way up you're going to get a really hard choppy look. So whatever program you're in put your hardness at down all the way. Um, I have my flow on this program. It's called flow on Photoshop and other programs. It'll be opacity and I'll, I've got it full opacity right now as I'm masking this away. Brush size, you can make it really super big to get big areas very quickly like so. I thought this particular fragile texture would look good with the hummingbird because of the colors in it. As I get closer to the subject, I'll make the brush size smaller and just go up as close as I can. Now it's, it's kind of tedious when you're getting around something like a branch. This program, which I wish they still offered, I'm sorry they don't, but there may be features in other software. This one has something called edge aware, which is very helpful because you can get right up against the edge of something and it will not mask over it like that. If you don't have something like that, you just have to make your brush small enough and be very careful to get up close. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit here. Move this around very small brush and you can get up close like this. But I like the edge aware on this program because it goes a lot faster as you can see. I can go right up to the edge and it'll leave a little rim around the edge when I do this but I always mask away the edges of my subjects uh, to blend the texture in with the subject. And I'll show you that. See the little green edge? That's what you don't want to see when you're done, but I'll, I'll show you how I deal with that. Let me zoom back out a little so I can see what I'm doing as I go around the edge. Let me zoom out all the way so I can make sure like this. Go all the way and get in these little areas. Like look 
look right here in the area of the feet. A lot of people might forget this. But um, you just got to make your brush size small enough to get in there. But don't forget those little areas like that that might be between stuff. Okay, now we have the little green rim around the bird. So it looks like this is pasted on right now. And that is not the look I want. At this point, I'm going to turn the edge aware off. And I'm going to turn my flow, which is opacity, down. And I'm just going to softly go. Let me get in close so you can see. With a small brush, I'm just going to softly go right up against the subject. Let's turn that flow up a little. And actually go over the edges of the subject. This really helps to blend the subject in with the background to where they become one. See, I'm going over those neck feathers, belly feathers. Let's go around the top of the head. Just trying to get rid of that little green rim from the original background and blend this in with him very softly. You might have to do it a few times to get it. It's like painting. You just keep going and just gently stroking it till you get it to where it looks right. See how much better the head looks now that I've gotten rid of the green? So let's just go around the back of him and do the same thing. Go around these feathers here underneath. And I have to do the same with the branch too. I'm doing him first. And let's take a look at this foot area. Zoom in really close. Make sure my brush size is still pretty small. Get rid of this green. Bring that texture right over into his feathers. And there's a little spot right here between him and the branch. And I'm just going to tap real gently in there to get rid of that bright yellow green. And then go around his foot on the bottom. And then get the top of his foot. And then we're going to deal with this branch. Might make the brush a tad bit bigger. That's a little too big. And I just stroke multiple times, just like painting, till you get it dark enough where that bright background is gone. And if you go over a lot, on something that's not your focal point, like the branch is not the focal point. It's part of the picture, but it's not the focal point. Um, you can actually go over it a little bit more. I got a lot of branch here to do. Let me get over and scoot the picture over. There we go. And I'm trying to get a little bigger brush here and there. And I'm just going around that edge. You can hear my tapping probably. I'm using a Wacom tablet on my desktop for this picture. And then as I get further out like this to this right edge, I get a little bigger brush and just really tap on the edge to fade that in because you want to bring the eye in from the edges toward the bird. So you get an impression that there's a branch there, but it's not standing out. See how cool that looks? Now let's get the rest of this branch. I'm going to move this around a little bit. A little smaller brush. And get rid of that on this bottom edge. All that bright yellow green from the original background will be gone. And you do the same thing here on this side of the branch. You just do a little bigger brush and just do some tapping at this low opacity to fade that in like that. And then I like to go around the edges of the bird again as well. 
and do that same thing I just did with the branch. Just a little bit of tapping along those edges to fade them in. And where these feathers are kind of bright, if you want to tone them down, just lower the opacity a little and just tap. And this will bring some of the texture into those feathers, which that texture is a little darker. And see it tone that brightness down. I should have duplicated my bird layer so you could see the original, but I forgot. You see what happens when I don't do a video for a while? I forget things. Okay, now let's go back out. Well, it doesn't that just look pretty? I think I want to open another texture from the Fragile Collection and put it on top to give him a little bit more light. And I kind of like this golden glow in some of these. So let's try this one and see. Let's rotate that this way. No. Let's go the other way. This way. Because the reason I just changed that, the light, I want the light coming from him, coming from the right side, I mean, onto him. And this has the brighter side on the right. So I want to put the brighter side on the right. Now let's resize this one up. And let's change layer mode. Now multiply is way too dark. Overlay is kind of yellowy, too much yellowy green. Soft light brightens up a little bit. Hard light's a little strong. But what if we lower the opacity? That's a little too faded. Let's try that on soft light with the lower opacity. Just give him a little bit. If you have it up too high, it's going to pick up too much color, which you can always desaturate if you just want to use the light from the texture layer. You can always desaturate the texture layer if you just want the light and not the color. I do want some of the color, but I don't want it that strong. So I'm just going to play with opacity slider here on that layer and just maybe around 37, 40, 40%. 40 and you can turn that layer on and off. That just gives him a nice little golden glow. Isn't that pretty? I might want to brighten him up a little. And this is the advantage of working on different layers. You can just go to the layer you want to work on. And you can play with your brightness and your exposure and things like that. I'm using exposure here just to raise that exposure up a little. About 40. 40 seems to be my magic number here. Now that looks a little better. And then I'll review the image a little bit closer, especially when I'm on his layer, to see... I can barely see in this black over here on the right that I've left a rim under the under the branch right in here. You can't really see it, but it may see it when it prints. So I'm just going to raise the opacity up and just, oops, I'm on the wrong layer. Undo. Well, I think I'm undoing. Reset. There we go. Undo didn't work for some reason. Okay. Back on the bird layer where I'm supposed to be. Just mask this out and make sure I've got it all. There we go. I might want to lower that opacity again and go over his head area just a little bit more, bringing some of that texture in there, blend him in. I still see a little bit of a rim on the underside of the beak. I'm going to go with a real tiny brush. Get that bright background line out from under there. And then if, let's say you accidentally go over the beak like that, you can undo if undo works, but apparently it's not working. So see, I just made a mistake. I'm going to bring back, I move my mask to the other direction, bring back that beak like that. And then, of course, I got it out of line. So let's trim it back up. Go back under there. And then lower the flow. 
and just go over the edge a little bit to soften it as if that beak is kind of going off into the background. Just touching up around. Oh, I'm really happy with how that looks. Isn't he sweet? Now at this point, I would merge all the layers like so. And then I have my finished image that I can save to my computer and print. And see how easy it is, though, to work with this fragile collection. It's just really cool. And I could add even more of these textures on top, or I could even use some of the other daily texture sets with different um, looks and patterns and colors if I really wanted to take this a little further. But I'm, I'm really happy with this. This is kind of what I was after with him. In this picture it's kind of a moody moody look um, let me duplicate this bird layer bring it up and reset the mass and then you can see that's where I started so that was that's the original photo I started with and then that's where I've ended up now, isn't that really pretty I hope you guys have enjoyed this little short editing video and I plan to be posting more editing videos. I'm going to be home um, a lot more. My husband is having some treatments for cancer and so we won't be on the road as much over the next several months and I'll be home a lot more which means that I can do more editing videos for you guys and I hope you enjoy them. As always, thanks for watching and have a great day.